Hi, I'm Pete Lesher, and I'm chief curator with the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum right here in St. Michael's. St. Michael's is a town that was laid out in the 18th century around a central public square, St. Mary's Square, that still serves something of that function today. This town got its start with, as a shipbuilding town, uh, building the sorts of Baltimore clippers that served as privateers and, and blockade runners during the War of 1812. After the war, that really died out, and St. Michael's revived again as a seafood town, first with the oystermen and later with the crab pickers. Not only the oystermen who brought the, the catch into the dock here, but also with the seafood packing houses that lined the waterfront and shipped the, the catch off to Baltimore. In the 20th century, that trade too has declined, and today we're a thriving harbor and a well-preserved historic district that welcomes people uh, to our restaurants and shops. During the War of 1812, the British attacked the town of St. Michael's. Under cover of early morning darkness, the British advanced up on the town and sent a landing party ashore. Legend has it that the town was spared in part because General Perry Benson, in his sagacity, ordered lanterns hung in the masts in the tops of trees and ordered a blackout in the town, thus causing the British to overshoot the town. Uh, today we call it the town that fooled the British. Crab Claw Restaurant, located on the waterfront in downtown St. Michael's, is a family-owned business. It's been in St. Michael's for over 33 years. We're open seven days a week, March through December. Our menu consists of delicious crab cakes, shrimp, oysters, clams, specialty fish, as well as the Maryland steamed blue crabs. We have a nice filet mignon and chicken dishes for the land lover. You may arrive by car or boat. We have two-hour dockage while dining and ample parking. So please include us while visiting Talbot County. Log canoe racing is a great team effort, and unless you have a particularly dedicated, skilled, strong, courageous, uh, sharp crew, you're going to have problems. These boats were originally used as work boats. They were the pickup truck of the bay. They were used for fishing and crabbing and oyster tonging. And of course, as work boats, they had much, much smaller rigs than you see today. As sailors will, the, the watermen would frequently race one another back home, and uh, legend has it that the first boat in got a better price than the later boat. Fact is, something happened before 1888 to make it possible to catch more oysters, and you're sitting on the skipjack. The skipjack was so cheap to build they built about 800 of them very quickly and it tripled the number of boats harvesting oysters which tripled the volume of what they could catch from 5 million to 15 million. I'm Captain Ed Farley with the Skipjack HM Krentz and we really enjoy taking people out to share a little bit of the lore, the history, the ecology of the Chesapeake Bay, teach them about the way of the watermen catching oysters. We'll catch oysters and show you all about that. And to contact us you call 410-745-6080 or get on the internet and dial in www.oystercatcher.com and you'll be able to get all the information. We sail three times a day at 11 2 in a nice sunset trip like this evening. It's been a beautiful breeze and we wish you could have been aboard to join us. old way of catching oysters here in the Chesapeake Bay were by, is by tongs and uh, they say the Indians called them that way and they're still using them and uh, uh, it, it seems like to be a, a good way to catch them because that way you never deplete the uh, oyster beds. Uh, 
they, they make a living, uh, and it's, it's the hardcore people that do that. The watermen are hardcore. They have to face the elements. They go out when it's freezing and blowing and snowing, and uh, that's the time that the oysters bring the most money. In the winter, everybody wants to eat oysters in the winter, so you have to gather them when you can. They use the tongs, it's like two sticks, and they're crossed in the middle, and they have a rake on each end, and they pull them together like that, and then they lift them up on the boat, and dump them on the boat, and then they have to call through them. Uh, it's, it's, it's a hard way to make a living, really hard. I heard one guy say, anybody said he likes doing that is a liar, but, <laughs> but it is a really hard way to make a living. But it, 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 it's, uh, people do make a living, they make very good livings out of it. Uh, and it, also there's another way called patent tong, and that is limited to the Bay Area. That is a hydraulic, great big rig of hydraulic, and, and you drop it in the water, and then you pull your lever of the hydraulics, pulls them together, and it brings it, a, a lot of oysters up and dumps it like that. There's a few people do, that do that, not a lot of people. Most people do by hand tongs. There's also another way, the skipjacks, the dredge boats. Uh, they have to dredge by sail four days a week. Monday and Tuesday they can use power. And uh, on those days they catch more oysters. But on the skipjacks they drag their dredges behind them and drag over the bottom for a half a mile at a time. And when they pull it up it's full, full of real big beautiful oysters and they dump it on the deck. Come to Italy without ever leaving Easton. Portofino is a small town in the northern Riviera and we're known for our hospitality. At Portofino Ristorante Italiano, you can enjoy a casually elegant dining experience Italian style. Start off with a cocktail or perhaps a glass of wine. From our selection of wines from Italy, New Zealand and California, we feature homemade pastas and sauces such as gnocchi al pesto, penne fra diavolo and lasagna. In addition, Portofino offers traditional regional specialties including pollo alla inverno, risotto and of course our signature dish, zuppa di pesce alla Portofino. Complete your meal with something sweet such as tiramisu or cannoli. We are here to make it certain that you feel welcome. Ciao, buon appetito, a presto. Easton owes its origins to the establishment of the courthouse here in 1710, although it took some time after that before the town actually grew up around it. Easton was a planned town beginning in the 1780s, laid out on a simple grid. And today, we have a well-preserved and very walkable historic district uh, with a, quite a vital uh, downtown community. Uh, restaurants and shops, but this is also an arts town. This is a town that's anchored by a performing arts uh, theater, the Avalon Theater, uh, but also by a whole community of, of galleries uh, anchored by the Academy Art Museum, a real gem of a, of a place here on the southern edge of town. Visiting Easton Town Center is wonderful. It's so historic. It's like stepping back in time, except when it comes time for shopping. You can find everything here. You can find fine shotguns from Cesar Guarini, Benelli, Beretta, collectible firearms from Parker, Foxes, L.C. Smiths, English Doubles, hunting and shooting supplies at Albright's Gun Shop. For the collectors, stop in and pick out a painting of your choice or commission a landscape, Grafton Galleries, graftonarts.com. The three of us are, were painters, professional painters and artists in our own right, and we got together in 1997 and opened the Troika Gallery. The cool thing is that the, name, the word Troika is Greek and it means a committee of three that represents the finest of fine art. I've been painting all of my life, but professionally for the last uh, 21 years since 88. Uh, professional portraits, working in pastel, as you see the gentleman here in the red shirt is a pastel, as well as oil. Three of us owners paint in the back room of the Troika Gallery, and you can watch us create a commissioned portrait right before your eyes. I just used to paint all boats and dogs and uh, houses and things, but I just came to portraits and fell in love with them like each one I do. Uh, I spend two or three months on a portrait and I fall in love with that person in lots of different ways and so that's why I love to paint. Actually I've been an artist all of my life and I think probably most artists will say that. My career led from being a commercial artist doing illustrations, 
but I think probably while I was being an illustrator, that's when I fell in love with the figure. And over the years, uh, it's developed that I really have a passion for doing portraits. In oil and watercolor. And what excites me the most is when the client comes in and looks at the portrait and I see that glint in their eye that says, she's got it. Okay, now you're going to see a great transformation. Here is the subject. Here is the finished portrait of the subject. The Oxford Bellevue Ferry, the oldest privately owned ferry in America, was founded in 1683, before this was America. The ferry now holds nine vehicles, lots of bicycles and passengers. We shuttle back and forth every day. From early in the morning at 9 a.m. we start in Oxford and we run until sunset. We run every day through mid-April till the end of October and then weekends in November. It's one of the top 10 bicycle routes in America. Come by car, come on foot. We'd love to have you join us. Oxford is almost completely surrounded by water and this is a town that has related to the water going all the way back to its origins in the 17th century. This is a town that was a colonial port of call. There was one of the few customs houses on the eastern shore was located right here in Oxford. This was a place of trade, shipping out the tobacco from the, the colonies and importing uh, oh, wine and rum and slaves and all the things that, that frankly we needed here in the colonies at the time. One of the leading citizens of Oxford in the 18th century was Robert Morris. He was a, a merchant who was involved with, with reforming how tobacco was measured, trading for the first time in, in, mo in money rather than in pounds of tobacco. Uh, he was quite an innovator, but his, his career was cut short. In 1750, one of, his, uh, one of his ships had just arrived and he went out to greet and toast with the captain out in the middle of the Treadavon River. As he was leaving to come back into Oxford, they fired a cannon salute to him, but the gun went off prematurely and Robert Morris was fatally injured. His son went on to become a signer of the Declaration of Independence and a financier of the American Revolution. Oxford got a little quieter after the American Revolution. Even its old ferry shut down for a brief period, but today it's back strong as ever, America's oldest privately operated ferry. When you're visiting Maryland's eastern shore, you must try a Chesapeake Bay blue crab. I'm going to show you how to eat a blue crab without looking like a tourist. Do not smash your crab with a mallet. You do not use a fork. The first thing you do is take the front claws off. Then you take the crab, you grab the fins in one hand and you take the crab's point in the other and you take the top shell off. Whoops. And go over here. Okay. Then you clean the inside of the crab out. Take the tent and remove the gills, which are the lungs. Then you cut off the fins. You put that in your disregard pile. Then you take off the next layer of the crab, top carcass. Now you have a clean Maryland blue crab and you take your fingers and you just pick out the delicious back fin crab meat. You dip it in your vinegar or a bit Old Bay seasoning and some people prefer dog butter. Enjoy. You're watching Maryland's Eastern Shore Hotel Channel part of the Visitors TV Network. For more information on anything you've seen on this program, visit our website, visitorstvnetwork.com, where you can view all of the video for this city as well as all of the other cities in our network and link directly to the attraction's website and get more information such as the restaurant menus, the local weather forecast, calendar of events, and directions from your hotel. Hi, 
My name is Mike Kaminskis. I'm the golf professional and golf course manager at Hogdeck Golf Course. I'd like to invite everybody to come out to play. We've got a fantastic 18-hole par 72 championship golf course, rated four stars and top 25 public golf courses in the nation by Golf Digest magazine. We also have a par 32 executive golf course for all ability levels, along with our great practice areas, a chipping green, putting green, driving range, and a fully stocked golf shop for all your golfing needs. We'd like everybody to come out and see us here at Hogneck. For a tee time, please give us a call, 410-822-6079. Tillman Island is connected to the rest of the world with a drawbridge, which some say is the busiest one in the United States. That is, it opens the most times. There's a lot of traffic here, not just because of all the yachts that pass through this narrow waterway of, of Knapp's Narrows, but because of all the watermen here. Tillman Island is first and foremost a waterman's town. Uh, so located so close to all of the oyster beds, uh, to good crabbing grounds, to good fishing grounds, and right along Knapp's Narrows and farther down the island on, on Dogwood Harbor, you can find a lot of these watermen's boats still tied up, including some of the, the old sailing vessels, the skipjacks, one of Maryland's state symbols. Make the Chesapeake part of your story by visiting the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum in beautiful St. Michael's, Maryland. You'll take home an authentic experience of rich history and a rewardingly good time. Watch shipwrights restoring and maintaining the largest fleet of Chesapeake boats. Climb to the top of the 1879 Hooper Strait Lighthouse and learn about the life of a lighthouse keeper. Stroll the living shoreline to Waterman's Wharf where you can pull up a crab or eel pot and try tonguing for oysters. You might even find yourself aboard a real skipjack watching a log canoe race in one of our exhibits or out on the Miles River for a scenic cruise aboard Mr. Jim. There's engaging art exhibits, waterfowling displays, and more Chesapeake history than in any other place in the world, all waiting for you to make the Chesapeake part of your story at the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum in St. Michael's, Maryland. For more information, visit cbmm.org or find us on Facebook.